Hello and welcome everyone to the Varsity Tutor Star Course Series, where today we are going to get up close and personal with some of the most amazing animals on the planet. We're talking about sea turtles who date back to around the time of the dinosaurs and probably bad news, but maybe good news for you. They need our help. And we're going to learn about how we can help sea turtles by getting a behind the scenes tour of a sea turtle hospital at the South Carolina Aquarium. We've got Susan McLaughlin from the South Carolina Aquarium to give us that tour of the sea turtle hospital and teach us everything we need to know about why sea turtles are so cool and what we can do to help them. Now, before I turn it over to her, I want to make sure you guys know you're an integral part of today's lesson. So if you see the chat box to the right of the screen, please use that early and often. Susan's going to ask you some questions to find out what you know about sea turtles and what you want to know about sea turtles. So ask, answer her questions there. And then throughout the class, we want to hear from you. So if you've got any questions at any point, type those in the chat. If she doesn't get to them in the, uh, the middle of the lesson in the last 10 minutes or so, I'm going to be collecting all those questions and I'll interview Susan with your questions to get you some answers. Finally, make sure you've got a camera nearby throughout today's lesson. It's not a, a great trip to a sea turtle hospital if you don't get pictures to prove it. So have a camera nearby. We're going to have some opportunities for you to lean in, get a selfie with some of these turtles. If you upload that to Instagram and tag the South Carolina Aquarium and Varsity Tutors, you'll be entered to win a spot in Wildlife Creature Camp. We'll tell you more about that as uh, we get closer to some official selfie take moments. But with that said, we've been waiting over 100 million years of the turtle lifespan for this class to start. So don't let me hold it up any further. Let me turn it over to your teacher for today, Susan McLaughlin from the South Carolina Aquarium. Hi, everyone. I'm so excited that you guys could join me today. Um, and the fact that you are all joining actually made it so that I could do something really special. So um, I get to spend a little bit of time in a completely behind the scenes area of our aquarium today. And I'm going to take you guys on a whole tour of it. So my little a little bit messy, maybe not super polished in here. Um, and that's because it's a real working hospital, a real working sea turtle hospital. So um, it should be a lot of fun. Um, and I'm really excited to share with you guys the sea turtle patients that we're caring for. So like Brian said, my name is Susan. I'm an educator here at the South Carolina Aquarium. Um, and one of my favorite things to do is teach kids about sea turtles. But one of my other favorite things is when they ask me awesome questions. So um, one of the best ways for me to learn is by you guys asking me questions. Definitely keep putting those in the chat and I will try to answer them as I go and we'll save some good ones for the end too. Now I want to share with you guys a couple of pictures really quick and then we'll start our tour. All right. So just to kick us off. Today we're going to be talking about saving sea turtles. So um, it's not just up to me or to the sea turtle biologists that work in this hospital. It's actually up to all of you watching um, to be able to help save sea turtles. And these are amazing creatures. They've been around for a really long time, like the time of the dinosaurs. Um, these creatures have been around on Earth for so long, um, and they're really amazing animals. So I think that they're definitely worth protecting um, and protecting our ocean as a whole could really benefit the turtles as well. Now, I want to show you guys kind of where I am because you're probably not all right here in Charleston, South Carolina. You could be from all over the world. So um, kind of take a look at this big world map and try to figure out where you are. And we're going to kind of zoom into it really quick because um, I'm in the United States. Uh, maybe a lot of you guys are too. I'm going to put a little star over there. So I'm over on the East Coast. If I zoom into the United States, maybe you're in the U.S. too, and you can find your state. This is the state I'm in here. I'm in South Carolina. So like I said, the East Coast of the United States. We've got the Atlantic Ocean right here. And this is what our aquarium looks like. I'm really proud to share it always. If you guys are ever in Charleston, South Carolina, come visit. I think it's an amazing place. Um, our aquarium is actually on the water. So it's on the harbor, so not quite the ocean. And um, this is actually a river that opens up into the ocean. So if we could turn and look in this picture a little bit um, off to the right, that's where the ocean is. So we're so close to the ocean, which makes it really easy to help out these ocean animals, like these sea turtles, right? Now there's, seven different types of sea turtles in the world, um, but we actually only see four of them off the coast of South Carolina. So there's some all over the world, um, but these four species are the ones that are kind of our local natives. These are the ones we could see here. Um, and I want to introduce you guys to a couple of them. So 
the, I'm gonna start with the leatherback. Now maybe you've heard of the leatherback sea turtle. They're really, really big. They can get to be um, over eight feet long. That's probably, I mean, that's almost like two kids standing on top of each other, right? It's a really big animal. Um, and they're called a leatherback because their shell is actually really leathery. It's really flexible. Um, and that makes it so they can dive really deep down into the water. Um, and they love to dive very deep chasing their favorite food, which is something like jellies. They love to eat jellyfish. That's almost all they eat, which is kind of crazy to imagine a turtle that big living off of jellies only. I think it's pretty impressive. But since they're so big, we don't see them in our hospital very often. They live really far out in the ocean, like to dive really deep. If we ever find one that is injured, we actually try to treat it right there on the beach and release it immediately. Because it's such a large animal, it could be really stressful on them to try to transport them back to our hospital. So we have had them in the hospital before, but it's pretty uncommon. We usually don't see them here. But the other three kinds, the loggerheads, the greens and the Kemp's Ridleys we see in our hospital a lot um, and you guys are going to get to meet each of those species up close today. Real live sea turtle patients. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, the loggerhead up in this top left corner, it's a little bit yellow. Um, that's actually our state reptile here in South Carolina. We're big fans of the loggerheads um, and part of the reason for that is that they love to nest on our beaches. We actually I haven't checked the numbers today, but it's nesting season um, and the numbers grow every day. We can go and check and see how many nests have been laid. Um, yesterday, it was like 4,800. So a lot of sea turtle nests and each nest has like 120 eggs in it. So many sea turtles coming up on our beaches, laying their eggs. It's a really great opportunity to protect them. Now we also see the other species, but usually they're a little bit younger and not laying their eggs. So we see green sea turtles here. They're actually named that because of the fat of their body turns a little bit green from the food that they eat. They actually eat almost only greens and plants once they get to be adults. Now, I love my vegetables, especially like broccoli, but I've never eaten so much broccoli that my skin has turned green. I don't know about you guys, but that happens to green sea turtles. They eat so much seaweed, they turn a little bit green. I think that's very impressive. And then there's also the chem. Ridley, which is my personal favorite. Um, they're the smallest and most endangered species in the world. You guys want to take a guess in the chat and tell me, do you, do you think you know what the word endangered means? Go ahead and give me your best definition. I'll get to that in a second. Give you guys a second to, to guess. Now, Kemp's Ridleys are kind of easy to recognize because they have that hook on the front of their beak. And they use that to eat the food that they like, stuff like crustaceans, like shrimp. They love to eat shrimp. Now, unfortunately, that's why we see a lot of them in the hospital here is because fishermen also use shrimp as bait on their hooks. So sometimes Kemp's Ridley's get caught on fishermen's hooks. We're gonna meet some of those patients today. A lot of you guys had really good definitions for endangered. Now, I, the definition I like to use is that there's not very many of them left. So. So if you've ever heard of an animal being extinct, that means there's none of them left. Endangered means they're at risk of becoming extinct. So all species of sea turtles are either threatened or endangered. We don't want them to go extinct. We want to protect them. So it's really important um, that we find ways to protect the sea turtles. And we're going to talk a lot about those ways today. One of the ways that we help here at the hospital is by caring for the sea turtles. So when there's one that's injured um, or sick out in the wild, if someone finds that turtle, it could even just be like you and your family on vacation at the beach and you see a sea turtle that's washed up on the beach and it looks like it's hurt. Maybe there's something wrong with it. And you're like, that turtle needs help. Now, the people you would call is the Department of Natural Resources, which is kind of like the wildlife police. They're a really good number to call um, if you find any type of um, injured wildlife and they'll point you in the right direction. So if you call the Department of Natural Resources here in South Carolina, um, they're going to call us at the hospital and then they're going to bring that turtle to us so that we can start taking care of it. Now, you guys have probably been to a hospital before or maybe to the doctor before and you know that sometimes you just need some professional help. If you're feeling a little bit sick or a little bit hurt, um, you're going to need some help and sea turtles do too. So when they come into our care, we're going to do everything we can and there's a lot of different things that they can be brought into the hospital for. We're going to see a lot of those different reasons um, as we walk through and meet the patients. 
But the really good news is they don't stay here forever. The big goal of ours here at the South Carolina Aquarium is to take these turtles, rehabilitate them, which means make them feel better, and then we're going to release them. They call that their journey home. So we've been able to release 322 sea turtles so far, which is really exciting. We actually just released two last week. It's an early morning on the beach. We sent two turtles home. Um, it's always really, really happy and exciting. We're so happy to see them after they've recovered. Some of them are in our care for maybe up to two years while they're to the ocean, we can release them. Sometimes off of a boat, sometimes right off of the beach like this. All right, guys, enough of the pictures. I'm excited. I'm going to go ahead and take you guys um, through the hospital. We're going to walk through and see all of the patients that are in here. We're going to meet at least one of each of those species um, that we talked about, the loggerheads, the Kemp's Ridleys, and the Greens. And you guys just keep your questions coming in. I'm going to try to get to them as I go, but we'll have time at the end. All right, let me turn my screen around so you guys can see this amazing hospital. All right. Now, like I said, this is not a very polished area. It's, uh, it doesn't look like an exhibit in an aquarium. Um, this is actually kind of the basement level. We have two levels to our hospital. So upstairs, there is another part of our hospital where if you were visiting the aquarium, you could actually walk um, up to the glass and see some of those sea turtles that are recovering there. But I wanted to take you guys behind the scenes. So this is an area that if you were visiting the aquarium, you would not get to see totally behind the scenes. In fact, I don't get to come down here very often. So the fact that you guys wanted to do this trip made it so that I could come down here into this very special place. You can kind of see all of these big tanks. Each of those holds a sea turtle. Some of them even have multiple turtles in them. And then you can also see we've got lots of cleaning materials because so much of taking care of a turtle is cleaning. A lot of cleaning up all of their tanks and making sure that they're nice and healthy. Now, let's start by seeing. We're going to walk over and see one little turtle here. You can see this area is really roped off, if any of you are asking about that. Um, this is all blocked off because the turtle that's in there actually has something contagious called fiber papilloma. So he's in quarantine. And quarantine just means he needs to be separated so that he doesn't get any of the other turtles sick. Um, and it could be passed through the water. So we don't want him to splash. So we made him these fancy shower curtains to go around his tank so that if he splashes, it doesn't go into the other tanks. <laughs> but I want to show you guys. Let's start with this cute little turtle. Now, cute's not a very scientific word, but I think uh, it's pretty hard to deny that these turtles aren't cute. So I think it's okay to think they're cute as long as we also think about them in a scientific way and how we can help them, right? Now, this turtle here, his name is Smoky Quartz. Smoky Quartz is a juvenile Kemp's Ridley sea turtle. He actually came in in June, on June 28th, actually, um, from an area of South Carolina called Myrtle Beach and was found with a really, really deep hook um, in his throat. So like we talked about, a lot of times people are fishing and they're using shrimp as their bait, which is the favorite snack of a Kemp's Ridley sea turtle. So sometimes they get caught on a hook. And that can make them definitely uncomfortable. But luckily, the fisherman that caught Smoky Quartz here um, didn't just cut that fishing line and let him swim away with a hook stuck in his mouth. Luckily, he knew that something was wrong and they called for help. So like we said, he called for help. The Department of Natural Resources shows up. And then they bring this turtle to us here at the hospital where he had to have surgery to remove that hook. It's actually a really big type of J hook. Um, there's a couple of different types of hooks, but J hooks are one that we recommend people not use because they can get caught in a turtle's throat more easily. There's a type of hook called circle hooks um, that sometimes it are better for. They still catch lots of fish, but they don't catch the turtles. Now you might wonder, where are we getting these names from? Um, so Smoky Quartz seems like a silly name for a turtle. We have to pick a naming theme each year to decide what we want to call all the turtles um, because we usually get about 25 turtles in per year. So that's a lot of names to come up with. So we always pick a theme. Um, we did a whole year of Harry Potter names. Um, we did ones from the Lion King. Um, and this year the theme was gemstones. So there's a lot of really interesting gemstone names. So little Smokey here, Smokey Quartz, has kind of a funny name. 
Now I'm also, I'm calling him a boy, but we don't know if this turtle is a boy or a girl. It's actually really hard to tell. So when a sea turtle is young, they look exactly the same. Whether they're a boy or a girl, they look identical. You cannot tell the difference until they get to be an adult and they don't become an adult until they're at least 25. Now, Smoky Quartz is a juvenile, so probably somewhere between like five and 10 years old. We don't really know how old he is. So we won't know if he's a boy or a girl probably the entire time we have him here, but luckily it doesn't really change their care any. Oh, he kind of looks like he's looking at you guys, kind of peering up here. What are they doing? <laughs> Now, his tank is probably not very big. If you're looking at it, you can kind of tell. He's got kind of limited amount of space, but that's on purpose. We want to make sure that he's kind of resting. We don't want him to have to swim too hard or too far, but we want him to kind of take this time to heal because remember, he's got a big cut in his mouth. After he had that hook removed, we had to do some, um, had to give him some antibiotics, to make sure he doesn't get an infection. And we had to try to just give him time to heal. I see a good question about all of the stuff that's in his tank with him, right? You might be wondering what all these pipes are. Now, these are actually kind of like toys. We want to give him something to kind of maneuver around. We don't want it to be really boring in there. Um, and sometimes we even hide his food inside of different pipes and things. So um, this is actually just for him to swim through, almost like a little playground. And then this tube has kind of a funny name. We call it a head tube. And we call it that because the sea turtles really like to sleep with their heads inside of them. I think it makes a nice dark place for them to sleep. But it's pretty funny when they do that. That's one little Kemp's Ridley sea turtle. I want to show you guys a different type of turtle now. I'm going to walk over this way to see her. This is actually my first time seeing her today. And she's got a pretty intense injury here. This is Howlite. And Howlite is a loggerhead sea turtle. You can probably already see one of the big things happening with her, right? She's got these big cuts on her back. And those are from the propeller of a boat. So it's really important, especially in areas where there are sea turtles, but really anywhere, um, that if you're on a boat, you're looking out for wildlife and making sure that you're not in danger of accidentally hitting one. Now, how late was kind of at, um, at a totally different spot. We actually found how late because he also got her. She also got caught on a hook. Um, and then when they pulled her up, they realized, oh my gosh, she's got this big injury to her back. Um, this injury actually goes all the way down to her bone. So it's a little bit intense. Now, good question. What are all the other things on her shell, right? You can see all those little white spots. Those are called barnacles. And barnacles are actually a type of animal that grows a shell, kind of like a clam. And they grow their shell all along any hard surface, like a bottom of a boat or a pier or a rock or even a turtle shell. So they can grow on a turtle shell, but usually only if the turtle is not moving around very much. Now, she's moving her front flippers pretty well, but she's not using her back flippers very much. So we're a little bit worried that the um, injury to her back may have affected her ability to fully use her back flippers. But within the last couple of days, she did start being able to retract them a little bit, so pull them into her shell a little. So that's a really good sign. All right, this might be a really great spot for a selfie with Howlite because she's kind of posing right here in the front. <laughs> Look, makes a good spot for you guys to take a picture with her. So if you've got your cameras ready, feel free to pop on and take a little picture with her. We'll have another opportunity for a selfie later too, but I don't want you guys to miss that amazing shot of Howlite. She almost looks like she's looking right through the glass here at us. Now Howlite hasn't been here for very long either. She actually came in on July 12th, so she's very new. And with an injury like this, we could expect her to be here for quite a while. So um, she's gonna need a lot of time to heal that scar on her back. Um, she might need some other kind of like physical therapy to help her get those back legs moving again, too. So it, she could be here for quite a while. She'll probably be um, a patient in our care um, for probably at least another year, but it's very hard to tell. Sea turtles can be in our hospital from anywhere from two months to two years. It just really depends on what they came in for. All right. 
Now that we saw a loggerhead and a Kemp's Ridley, it's time for us to go see a green sea turtle. I wanna make sure we see one of each before we go on to seeing other animals or other sea turtles. Oh, perfect. This one's right up where we can see her very easily. This is Jade. Jade is a green sea turtle, although she doesn't look super green right now because she hasn't been eating very well. So um, she's kind of lost some of that color, but you can still see sort of that greenish tone um, around her flippers and her neck. Jade was actually found um, a little earlier in the year. She, she was found in April um, and she was floating and unable to dive. So if you imagine like if you've ever been to the pool or to the ocean, you've had like a beach ball you try to push it down into the water. When you let go of it, what happens? Yeah, it's going to float, right? It's going to float right back up to the surface. So that's what happens if a sea turtle has air stuck inside their body too. It makes it so that they float at the surface and they can't dive down and eat their food. So she wasn't able to dive down and get those greens and seaweed that she wanted to eat. She's kind of stuck floating at the surface. And when we did an exam on her, when she first came in, she's kind of she's covered in mud and algae and barnacles all over her shell. And she had a lot of gas stuck inside of her GI tract. And that usually means that she had been eating something she wasn't supposed to be eating. Does anyone have a guess what that might be? We know she's supposed to be eating seaweed and plants. She might even still eat a little bit of fish or something when she's this small, but she was eating something else. All right, I see. Yeah, lots of you guys have it. She was eating trash or plastic. And unfortunately, that's something we see happening a lot. A lot of the sea turtles that come into our care have eaten plastic. Now, sea turtles are really smart at doing sea turtle things. They're great at being able to navigate the ocean. Um, they migrate, I mean, hundreds and hundreds of miles to be able to go way further south to like the Bahamas where it's nice and warm during the winter. And then they'll come all the way up the coast um, past us even here in South Carolina um, during the winters so, or during summer. So they're going to make this huge migration. They're really smart animals, but they're not very good at telling the difference between trash and food, especially stuff like plastic because it floats around in the water a lot like seaweed and a lot like um, jellies, which like we talked about, a lot of those sea turtles love to eat jellyfish. So it can be really dangerous. Now we'll talk about a lot of ways that, this, that we can help the sea turtles, but reducing the amount of plastic that we use is one of the best things that we can do. And it's something we can all do pretty easily. Now you don't have to cut out everything at once. That would be really hard, but we can make small adjustments at a time. So if you pack your lunch for school this year, um, or if you pack a lunch to go on a picnic, instead of using plastic bags, use reusable bags um, or even, you know, a reusable lunchbox that you might use every day. Or if you bring a water bottle with you somewhere, because it's important to stay hydrated, right? You gotta bring your water bottle, but you wanna bring a reusable water bottle and not use those plastic water bottles that you're only going to use once um, and then throw them away, even if you're recycling them. It's really important to try to use reusable things because then it doesn't end up in the environment. That's some, just some little things we can do. There's a lot of other big things we can do too. All right, Jade is playing in the bubbles over there. Let's go see another turtle. I wanna show you this really big one here. It's another loggerhead. Her name is Moonstone. So Moonstone was actually caught um, by a research trawl. So there's scientists out doing research on sea turtles. Um, they'll often kind of catch a turtle um, check to see if it has any tags on it, which we put tags on turtles when we release them so we can see if we find them again. Oh, wow. She just came and took a really big breath of air for you guys. Now, when they're doing research, they might measure a turtle and then they're going to release it right away. But when they pick this turtle up for research, they realize she had a really big stingray barb or a stingray stinger all the way through her flipper. So she had to have surgery to have that removed. But luckily, she's in pretty good health otherwise. She's pretty strong. Um, she wasn't too, uh, too weak or anything. She's still been eating okay, but that probably didn't feel very good in her flipper, right? It was through one of her back flippers, and we can't even see where it is anymore. It's healed up really well. 
but she's showing off by taking a big breath for you guys. That's one of my favorite things about sea turtles that you might not know, but sea turtles breathe air just like we do. So they have to come up to the surface to breathe air. Now, if you put your hand on your chest and you take a big breath, go. Do you feel how your chest gets bigger? That's your lungs. Your lungs are filling with air. And that's how we breathe. That's how sea turtles breathe too. But instead of just having lungs in their chest, their lungs actually go all the way from the top of their shell to the back of their shell. They have huge lungs. And that allows them to fill their body with a lot more air. And they can also slow their heartbeat down so they don't use as much air. So if a sea turtle is resting or taking a nap, they can actually hold their breath for maybe about four or five hours a really long time. Let me see if we can see her through the side. So while she's moving around more, she's going to have to come up and take more breaths. Just like if you were running around on the playground, you probably have to come up for air more often. You have to be running around. You'd be breathing really fast. So if she's swimming around, she's going to have to breathe more often too. But if she's sleeping, she can take a nice little nap for like four hours. Awesome. I saw another really good question is how old is Moonstone? We notice how big she is, right? So how old is she? Now, it's really hard to tell um, how old a sea turtle is. So we actually don't know. Um, but we can kind of guess based on their size um, how old they are. Um, but it's still really hard to tell. So we know that she is about 144 pounds. Um, so she's a young adult. Um, so she is an adult adult and we know she's um almost full grown um if not completely full grown but she's she's still growing maybe a little bit so um she's probably a young adult she might be around 25 years old but she could be older than that too sea turtles can live a very long time they can live to be maybe 80 or even 100 years old she's using that head tube that i was telling you guys about isn't that funny when they stick their heads in the tubes to take a little nap I think that's hilarious. All right, before we run out of time, I want to show you guys three really little turtles um, that are all sharing a tank. But you might notice we've got a fence in the center, um, and that's to keep them separated because sea turtles actually like to be by themselves. That's why you see all of our turtles are not right next to another sea turtle. They actually prefer to be all alone. Um, they don't like to be around other turtles, even in the wild. Um, they're kind of solitary animals, so um, that's why they're all separate. Now, this one's name is Onyx. It's a really little, Kemp's Ridley. I see her through here. Oh, it's a little cloudy. This is one of the smallest Kemp's Ridleys that I've ever seen us have in her care. She's really fun. Um, she actually came in uh, at June 19th. So she's been here for a little while. She was one of those ones that got caught um, on a hook and line. She's actually entangled in fishing line, too. She had it all around her body. So that's one of the things we see pretty often is sea turtles being caught in trash, um, especially marine debris, stuff like fishing line or old fishing nets. They can get all tangled up in them, which is really dangerous. And she's only about two and a half pounds. That's a really little turtle. She had some bruising on her um, plastron, which is the name for the, the bottom side of her shell, like her belly. She had some bruising there. Um, from being all tangled up and maybe running into things while she was trying to keep swimming. Um, so she just needed some fluids, maybe an IV with some, um, a little bit of fluids and stuff to keep her hydrated, some sugar um, to help her kind of get her energy back um, and maybe even some vitamins to make sure she's healthy. Now these other two were also caught on hooks. So they've all got very similar stories. This one's name is Topaz. And back there, I don't think we'll be able to get to her. That's Opal. Nope, I can't quite reach. Opal's kind of back in the corner. I wanted you guys to see Onyx. Pretty cute. Let's see if you guys had any other questions. We don't know how old this turtle is. Very young, so considered a juvenile. Um, but juveniles can really be a wide range of ages, maybe five to 10 years old. But when they hatch, the sea turtles hatch out of a shell that's the same size as a ping pong ball. So they're really, really tiny. 
And if you guys go to the beach this summer, or if you live near the beach, there's a lot of things we can do to help out those little hatchlings and the mama sea turtles that are laying their eggs. Some of the best things we can do are make sure we keep our lights turned off if we're near the beach um, and not use any flashlights on the beach because those lights can be really disorienting to the little turtles. We also want to make sure that if we are digging any holes or building sandcastles, that's super fun. But we want to make sure we leave everything kind of the way we found it. So we want to fill in any holes and knock down those sandcastles. That way we don't create any big barriers for those little turtles. There's a lot of things we can do on the beach. And we can also just help keep the beach clean. So we might pick up trash when we find it. Um, but you don't have to be at the beach picking up trash to help sea turtles. You can be anywhere in the world because trash that makes it into the water systems, if it makes it into, um, in, into like a storm drain or into a little river or a creek, all of that water is eventually going to flow into the ocean. And even if it doesn't make it all the way to the ocean, it's going to impact a lot of animals along the way. So no matter where you live, it's really helpful to be able to take care of all of those wildlife, all of those animals um, by picking up any trash you find. I like to even get a whole group of friends together and do what's called a litter sweep. If you get a bunch of friends together and all go out and try to collect as much trash as you can, then you can make a big impact all at once. Just wanna make sure you um, don't pick up anything sharp and um, make sure you take an adult with you. That's not something you wanna do, just kids. All right, guys. I think we've got some time for questions. So I'm gonna kind of set up back over here um, and Brian's going to help me out by reading some of your questions for me. Awesome. Hey, thanks so much, Susan. What an amazing treat to get to meet so many cool animals to, um, you know, it was, you know, bittersweet, right? You see them, you know, kind of hurting a little bit and, uh, and suffering a little bit. It's so cool what you guys are doing at the aquarium to, uh, to help them out. So thank you for all that you're doing and uh, for just such an amazing behind the scenes tour. So for everybody out there, um, I mean, now that uh, Susan's set up, we're going to get her back on screen here with me too. Um, thank you guys for all of your questions. As you saw, Susan was answering a ton of them in real time, but we do have some that are kind of more general that we able to get, get those coming out here also. Also, my question for you guys is, did everyone get the, uh, the turtle selfies you were hoping for? I see, I see a ton of yeses. Uh, we're, we're already, uh, they were pinging me saying there's already some cool stuff up on Instagram. On the way out, we're going to have the official handles to, uh, to make sure that we, we get you those, uh, those pictures up on Instagram for a chance to win a spot in Varsity Tutors Wildlife Creature Camp. If you click the link on your screen, you can learn more about it or enroll. We've got new uh, groups starting every Monday uh, to learn about sea turtles and other amazing creatures and all those kind of things. Um, if you guys want a, a selfie that you haven't gotten quite yet, and if you come to a lot of these classes, we do those right around now. I'm going to make sure that uh, Susan's on full screen when she's answering your questions, so you can lean in and get a picture with her too. And she's got a few artifacts and things there as well. So we'll make sure if you didn't get the picture you wanted just yet, you're kind of waiting for me to introduce it. You'll have opportunities over the next 10 minutes while uh, Susan's answering questions. Um, but you guys had some amazing questions. So let's get, many, let's get, well, I'm just excited to get to the questions. Let's get as many answers as we can. Um, one of them is, I love this question thanks you ever asked it um if turtles are eating jellyfish don't they get stung how do, how do they eat jellyfish safely or or you know do you get uh, turtles in that have, have you know are harmed by some of those things and you mentioned the stingray tell us a little bit more about um not how we can do it but how uh, turtles eat jellyfish <laughs> safely yeah that's a great question yeah i definitely don't recommend that anyone tries eating a jellyfish we are not well adapted to do that but sea turtles are so they've actually got scales they are reptiles so they've got really thick scales um, all along their faces, and then that hard beak. Um, so if a jellyfish is actually touching them, it's not stinging them at all. Um, it actually doesn't even bother their throat when they swallow it. They've got this kind of mucusy coating all down their throat, um, and it keeps them from ever feeling the sting of a jellyfish. So they can eat as many as they want. And they actually have um, a really cool adaptation. I don't have a picture with me, so you'll have to research it yourself. Um, but look up a picture of the inside of a turtle's mouth or the inside of their throat. Because if you actually look down a turtle's mouth, their throat is covered in these spikes. Um, that way, when they swallow a jellyfish, it keeps the jellyfish from sliding back up their throat. It looks really crazy, like something out of a movie. Um, but it's real. That's how, how these sea turtles love to eat jellyfish. 
Wow, that's really amazing. So definitely don't try that at home because you don't have those spikes in on your throat. But uh, it is nature is so amazing when you see all those adaptations that allow things like that to happen. So um, that's really fascinating. All right. So that may actually, that's a perfect segue into this next one. Thanks again to whoever asked this. I love this one. Um, somebody's asking, you know, we, you know, we, those of us who have pets, we like to give our dog a treat or, or something like that. Our, uh, do you guys have treats for, uh, you know, these animals are suffering a little bit and probably a little bit scared to be there. Do, do you have treats? If so, what are they? Um, maybe they're jellyfish, but, uh, but I love that question. <laughs> that is a really good question. So they get a really diverse diet. We want to feed them a lot of different things. Um, and we want it to all be natural food, stuff they would be eating in the wild because that's what's healthiest for them. And it's what they like. Um, so a treat for us might be something a little unhealthy, but a treat for a turtle is probably just their favorite food that they should be eating. Um, but we'll give them a really wide range of things. Um, and sometimes we do figure out what their favorite is and then maybe save that for um, when they have to take medicine or something like that. So we can kind of sneak their food or sneak their medicine into their food. Um, they do love to eat fish. Um, and all the food that we provide, all the seafood that we provide is actually restaurant quality. So it's the same stuff. If you ordered salmon at a restaurant, it's the same grade salmon that we're feeding these sea turtles here. So they're very spoiled, happy animals. Um, and sometimes when they're healing, when they're really getting close to being able to be released, we want to make sure they're good at hunting. Um, so if they had any struggle with maybe eyesight or being able to catch their own food before, um, we'll actually give them live blue crabs if they're the loggerhead sea turtles um, and have them hunt their own, which that is definitely their favorite. They love to do that. <laughs> That I'm, I'm uh, one, so it's you know great to hear that a little spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down for animals uh, as well. But I love that you mentioned uh, getting them ready to hunt because you know yeah if they've been living in, in your care for so long you know and you're gonna we had a lot of questions about you know what it takes to get uh, get them ready to uh, to release back in the wild. So let's maybe go into that. What's um how yeah. do you know when a turtle is ready to go back into the wild and then what kind of preparation do you need to do to make sure that when they get back out there you know they're safe they're uh, you know they're ready for everything that the wild can throw at them. Definitely. That's a great question. We don't want to just send them back out into the wild if they're not ready yet. Um, so really it starts at the very beginning. As soon as they get here, um, we really don't handle them. We're not picking them up and snuggling them or anything like that. We want them to stay wild. So we don't want them to get used to humans. Um, we actually have a lot of things blocking, um, like one way glass so we can see them, but they can't see us very well. Um, just, just to make sure that they don't get used to humans. And that's a really important first step. Um, but when they actually look like they're healthy and we want to be able to release them, there are a lot of different things that we'll do. So, um, to be able to tell if they're ready for release, first, we're going to do a blood test. Um, so we'll actually draw a little bit of blood. And if you've ever been to the doctor or the hospital before, you probably know that's a great way to tell if you're healthy. You can check your blood cells and make sure you don't have any infections. You can check all kinds of vitamin levels and make sure there's nothing else going on. Um, so we do blood work tests. We're going to make sure that they can swim properly. We've got these big exercise tanks um, upstairs, ones for them to practice their diving and actually ones that work almost like a treadmill. So the water pushes against them in one direction. They have to swim against it. Um, and that allows them to practice their swimming, make sure they can swim against a current. Um, and then they're going to get examined by our veterinarians here and also by um, the Department of Natural Resources, that original group that brings them to us. So there's a lot of people um, that have to kind of figure out if that turtle is really ready to go. And then it's a whole other thing trying to make sure that they um, have the right situation of where we release them. So depending on how old they are, um, what type of turtle they are, and what time of year it is, we could release them a lot of different places. So um, we want to put them wherever they would naturally be that time of year for that age. Sometimes the smaller turtles all like to come up into certain areas of like the salt marsh um, and like the green sea turtles love to come up into the salt marsh and feed on all that algae, but that's not where an adult loggerhead would be. So um, we have to really work with a lot of scientists to figure out what the best placement is when we're going to release them. I love that. That was one of my, you know, you mentioned their solitary animal. One of my concerns is like, Hey, you release them out there. Like how do they find, you know, turtles like them, their families, their friends, or even just kind of know that they're going back to a place where they'll feel comfortable. So um, uh, thank you for all the time you guys put into making sure they, you know, they come out to a place that, you know, they're, they're comfortable at that they're supposed to be, um, you know, and they're, they're fully ready for it. So um, total gear change here. But one of my other favorite questions came out, you mentioned, you know, so many of the, uh, the turtles, uh, you know, especially 
especially this year coming in with, um, you know, with, with fishing injuries, I guess you would say, right. It's plastics and, and fishing were the, the ones we heard the most about here. Um, do you have any advice for, you know, folks who go out fishing, um, you know, what kinds of things can they do to, to keep things, um, you know, just safer for turtles to be on the lookout um, since it seems like that is one of the, the bigger causes of them coming in recently. Definitely. And I mean, when you go fishing, there could be lots of different animals that you're not intending to catch and um, that could be nearby. So there are a lot of different things you can do. But um, one of the best things is really just checking with whatever local area that you're at. Um, there's probably a Fish and Wildlife Service or the Department of Natural Resources, and they'll give you a lot of information about where is a good place to be fishing during that time of year and what to look out for. If there are um, any endangered species in the area during that time, they might advise you to go to a different location. So it's great to check with those authorities before you go. Um, but one of the things here we talk about a lot is the difference in hooks. Like I mentioned, there's a circle hook, which um, you know, a regular hook is gonna be like a J hook like this, makes it easier to get caught on a turtle's neck, but a circle hook is a little bit more curved. Um, and that way you could catch a fish, but a turtle might be able to bite the food and get away still. So that's another good thing too. And then just to know who to call if you do encounter um, a wild animal that you didn't mean to catch. So here it's going to be the Department of Natural Resources. That'll be the same for most places um, in the United States. So if you ever catch an animal you didn't mean to catch, don't just cut that fishing line and let them swim away with a hook caught in their mouth because um, they probably won't be able to eat anything else until they get some help. So it's really important to make sure you at least call for help if you do accidentally catch another animal. Uh, thank you. Great advice. That's uh, that really helps. Yeah. Um, yeah. Very much appreciate that. All right, I think we got time for two more. One will make kind of a combo um, and less about, you know, uh, endangered turtles and all people are just fascinated by turtles. So people want to know how big they can get, how old they can get um, and just any other, you know, amazing things you can tell us about sea turtles since they are such incredible animals. Um, but specifically how, how big and how old can they get? So how big they can get really depends on the species. Um, but for those big leatherback sea turtles, they can get to be maybe a thousand pounds. So really, really big. Um, the loggerheads that we saw, maybe closer to 400 pounds or something like that. Um, so still huge. They can get really big. And those shells are pretty heavy, um, but they're great swimmers with those big front flippers. They work kind of like if you've ever been kayaking or canoeing, those flippers are shaped just like paddles. So it helps them to really push themselves through the water, even though they're pretty heavy animals. Um, and then how old they can get is kind of a mystery still. So I like to encourage people, if you're interested in sea turtles, you should maybe go to school, study them, become a sea turtle researcher um, and find that answer for me. And then you'll have to call me at the aquarium and tell me, Susan, I figured it out. Sea turtles can live to be this old because we're not sure yet. Scientists are still trying to figure it out. Um, but our best guess is between like 80 and 100 years. Thank you. And you actually, it true to, uh, to South Carolina Aquarium form, you kind of started to answer the, uh, the last question we have, but we'll give it to you anyway. Uh, for those who are fascinated uh, with sea turtles, which I think is all of us by this point, um, what advice do you have? How, how do we get to be like you and get to, to work in a, a turtle hospital, um, get to you know be up close and personal with, uh, with turtles or other marine life? I know it's kind of a dream career for so many of us. What advice do you have for, uh, for kids out there um, who would like to be able to do work like you do? Yeah, absolutely. It's my dream career too. So I'm happy to share um, kind of the path and it looks different for everybody, but I'd say, I mean, no matter how old you are, one of the best things you can do is just keep learning, keep, you know, soaking up all of that information, paying attention in science class, but maybe spending extra time reading. Um, you know, you can always go to your local library and check out books on any topics you're interested in. So if it's sea turtles, go to the library and check out books about sea turtles and learn as much as you can now, um, because that's really going to help you in the future. But as you get a little bit older, um, maybe when you're uh, 16 or 18, or maybe a little bit older, you can actually start volunteering um, at different places where you would work with animals. Now, um, that's what everybody who works with these sea turtles did. And they didn't volunteer with sea turtles. They volunteered at like a local shelter or a vet office working with cats and dogs, um, or maybe even on a farm working with horses. So it doesn't have to be that exact animal. Just getting that animal experience in any way is really helpful. Um, and then pretty much everybody here went to college um, and maybe even on to their master's um, to study different types of animal science or marine biology. I personally went to school for zoology, which is just like biology, study of animals. So um, there's a lot of different things you can study. And once you get to that point and you're in college taking classes, you might be able to kind of figure out exactly where you want to specialize. But 
um, there's a lot you can do before then too. So just keep learning, um, keep trying to figure out what you enjoy and then share that knowledge with your friends, with your family, maybe over dinner tonight, tell your family the favorite thing that you learned about sea turtles today. Yes, please. Well, great advice, uh, obviously, here at Bar City Tutors. Of course, we're going to back you with Keep Learning. Um, so on the way out, we'll make sure we have that link for you to be able to, uh, to or the handle, sorry, to check out the Instagram contest so that you can, um, one, be entered to win a spot in uh, in Wildlife Creature Camp where you can keep learning. Again, there's a link on your screen if uh, if you want to check it out there, too, and, and just enroll. It's one way to keep learning about animals. Another, the uh, South Carolina Aquarium handle will be up there. And if you want to, to check that out, tell your teachers. You guys do field trips for uh, for entire classes and everything. So tell your teachers and, uh, and be able to get some, uh, some exciting, even if you're not near, uh, near Charleston, you can get field trips like this. So, uh, so check all that out. Um, Susan, huge thanks for, uh, for just such an amazing tour. I think we're all, you know, like you mentioned, you don't even get to, to take that tour too often and you work there. So we're all, uh, really grateful for that behind the scenes tour. So thanks to you, um, for everyone else. Thanks for all of your great questions. We're really excited to, uh, to check out all of your pictures and everything at Wells as well. So, uh, as promised, here are the official rules and the handles to check out. If you go to either of these, you can learn more about Varsity Tutors. You can learn more about South Carolina Aquarium so that you can learn more about uh, turtles and uh, other exotic animals. So um, thanks to everyone for all of your questions. Thanks again to Susan and everyone at the South Carolina Aquarium. And we'll see everybody back here soon.